Now there is a third approach to achieving a mixed aldol reaction that may feel a little bit like cheating, but is extremely, extremely commonly used, particularly if you look at actual syntheses out there in the literature. We can take a compound that contains two carbonyl groups, two ketone or aldehyde groups, and engage them in an intramolecular aldol reaction. These tend to be selective, particularly in cases we can, when we can form a five or six membered ring. These ring sizes are especially stable and these will form preferentially, particularly under thermodynamic conditions when we use a relatively weak base like hydroxide or an alkoxide. Take this substrate, for example. It looks like we have a fairly large number of possibilities here. We've got two electrophilic carbonyl carbons and we've got four nucleophilic alpha carbons. Now, this particular substrate is symmetric, and so that whittles down the possibilities a little bit, but even so, we can still think about these two alpha carbons engaging with the other carbonyl carbon, and that's going to give rise to at least two unique possible products. But let's think about the structures of those products after we run, say, an aldol addition process. And let's number the carbons to make this a little bit easier to talk about. One of the possibilities involves carbon-3 as a nucleophile and carbon-6 as the electrophile. And this is equivalent, by the way, to using carbon-5 as the nucleophile and carbon-2 as the electrophile. We would get the same product in that case. An aldol addition reaction with 3 as the nucleophile and 6 as the electrophile would give rise to the following product. Let's call this pathway a involving the linkage of carbons 3 and 6. And I'll go ahead and number those carbons again to make this clearer. So carbon 6 was the electrophile, 7 was the methyl group linked to it, the nucleophile was carbon 3, and here we see carbons 4 and 5, here's carbon 2 and carbon 1 in this product. The other possible product is derived from the use of carbon 1 as a nucleophile and carbon 6 again as electrophile, and this is equivalent, by the way, to using carbon-7 as the nucleophile and carbon-2 as the electrophile. Let's call this pathway B, and I'm actually going to draw that to the right here for reasons that will become clear shortly. If we draw the product of this process, we see that we now are forming not a four-membered ring, but a one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. The product we would end up with is this, and let's again number the carbons. Six-membered rings are relatively stable because of a lack of various types of strain in the ring structure. Four-membered rings, on the other hand, are much less stable. They suffer from bad eclipsing strain and painful bond angles, as suggested by their Lewis structures. What this means is that we can generate the six-membered ring product selectively when we hit this substrate with base to engage in an aldol reaction. The four-membered ring product is not observed at all in fact, and the six-membered ring product can be formed in very high yield under these conditions which promote formation of the thermodynamically more stable product with a relatively weak base and heat and the like. And of course, under these conditions, it's likely that water would be eliminated, which would lead to the six-membered cyclohexenone or cyclic alpha-beta unsaturated ketone of course, we can imagine the same process happening in the four-membered ring intermediate. However, if we think about bond angles, this structure looks even more strained than the initial aldol addition product. And so overall, the primary lesson of this slide is that we can use intramolecular reactivity to selectively perform a mixed aldol condensation within a single molecule. And the key principle really is these especially privileged ring sizes. Five or six membered rings form selectively because they're relatively string free. We'll probably see a few relatively complicated examples in class and in homeworks, and so it is important to carefully count carbons when you're dealing with an intramolecular aldol reaction. Enumerate your possibilities, number your carbons, and think about and actually draw the structures explicitly of the possible products. If you're careful here, you'll notice the possibility of a five or six membered ring forming, and that will be the more stable product and the one that forms selectively.